first question, you've been on television before? Yes, I have. Yeah? Yes. When was that? Oh my gosh. Um, I've been on telly a few times for different things. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> was it embarrassing? No, you, it wasn't embarrassing, but you're making me reveal things that I haven't really... It's not naughty or anything. Yeah. Um, well, I used to work on as a researcher on BBC TV, so yeah. that involved being on telly a bit, and I've done a bit of TV work. And I also, there used to also be a programme in Liverpool drama called Brookside. Yes, yes, <laughs> and you were on that. I was, not for long, I, I, I played a specific, I, was, I had to play a DJ, because that's right. what I, okay. I think. Yeah. I was a DJ, DJ called Lindy Law. Lindy Law. <laughs> it wasn't did my have, name, did, I didn't Did you have it. like a script that you had to say? No, I about? didn't, no. I didn't, I just had to yeah. do a DJ role when someone was opening a new nightclub All right. as the DJ that was <laughs> <laughs> would you like to do it again <laughs> it was amusing it was yeah. amusing yeah all right <laughs> <laughs> it was called Brookside so Brookside. It's, it's oh, like it ran for so many it ran for so many years yeah um, it was a very very popular yeah drama it's like so every popular. day kind of drama. yeah kind of a yeah. couple of times a week yeah it was like on the frequency of like Coronation Street, Emmerdale, oh, really? all of that. And yeah. it was the same team before Hollyoaks. I've never watched Hollyoaks, but it was a lot of the same team. Yeah. Because that's all, that's based in Chester, but it's still a Merseyside thing. Yeah, and yeah. Brookside was a very Liverpool yeah. thing. Yeah. All right, cool. Um, question, you were saying something about yesterday was 23 years ago. Um, on Wednesday, on yeah. Wednesday, yeah. Um, was a very, very emotional and important day for Liverpool. Really? Yes, because it was 23 years since the Hillsborough yeah. tragedy. Um, and the reason why it was so important for the city and obviously for the families of the 96 people who died was because it was the day that the rest of the country um, got new or acknowledge what us in Liverpool so always So it was knew. exactly 23 day, uh, years 23 ago years. and also the statement came 23 yes. on the same day? No, that oh. because the actual incident happened, I think it was April the 15th, 1989. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. um, but on Wednesday was when the statement was read out which vindicated the, the fans of any blames, right. any blame. Because we, as I say, in Liverpool we knew it was a lie that you know, the police, the press, politicians, everyone was trying to blame the fans. Yeah. And everyone in Liverpool knew it wasn't the fans. So um, everything was like... Yes. Can, can you so for 23 years, the families of those people had to, one, fight for justice for their, fa yeah. for their family members who died. And it's hard because sometimes while I'm talking to you and thinking, it's not my place to... It's not my place really to speak. I'm not speaking on their behalf. I wouldn't dare to do that. Yeah. You know. How old are you? Peter, you don't ask a lady those questions. Really? <laughs> <laughs> no, okay, I was nineteen when it happened. All right, okay, 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 I'm forty five now. Um, <laughs> stop it, I do it. Oh, oh you. you? No, I'm for <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately. Um yes, yeah, yeah. so it was it's something that Everyone in the city knew, knows about, you know, it's part of our history. But also, as I read yesterday in the Echo, history was also made on Wednesday because it was the first time. This was the biggest, this was the biggest um, perversion of justice ever, mm. but ever. If you say like lies, could you give me an example of a lie? Oh gosh, sorry. Don't, don't worry. Lies saying that the fans caused the fans caused the trouble yeah. when they were put when the fans were directed into the football pens by the main police officer in Sheffield, Duckenfield yeah. his name was. Um, lies saying that the fans were urinating and on the dead people or dying people. Lies that they were stealing from them. You know, it was disgusting. It was, yeah. Lies also about the cut-off time of death. You know, they said the cut-off point of death was 3.15. It wasn't. They found, and it was proven, that up to 41 people could have been saved past that time. Really? Yeah. You know, so lies for many years, for all these years, and from the top, I say the top, you know, from the top of the um, hierarchy, 
all the way through. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You were saying also something about uh, newspapers involved? Yes, yeah. <clears throat> well, the initial information obviously apparently came through a press agency um, based in Sheffield called White's. Um, but then, so obviously other people, other press organisations and newspapers believed what the stories that the press agency was getting yeah. and one of the main people to believe it was the son you know obviously the son's always had a downer on liverpool anyway why, is, why oh, is that because it's the sun we've always we call it the scum you know we've always called it the scum um, <laughs> but so but after this happened the sun printed a newspaper headline and it said the truth and that was perpetuating all these lies that had been told. Yeah. So, well, can I ask you something about the sun? Is this mm. like is this the sun uh, was um, before the, the the Hillsborough? Um, how you call that? I wouldn't say an accident, but Tra tragedy, tragedy or disaster. Or yeah. yes, Do you, would you say that the the relationship between the Liverpool people and the sun was also troubled? Kind of. It already? wasn't. I wouldn't say it was. What you know, people. It was. It had, I suppose, an equal presence as much as the other um, red tops, as we call them. Yeah. You know, like the Daily Mirror, yeah, 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 the yeah, other yeah. things. So it had, and in some areas, it had maybe even a higher pile um, that you would have seen in shops. But yeah. since then, since those lies, since the Sun chose to print those lies, and Kelvin McKenzie, who was the editor in particular, took seemed to take great pride in showing how bad Liverpool was. Yeah. Um, then since since that time, sales of the sun, so it's they don't exist in Liverpool. There are, you know, I'll say there may be some news agents who maybe stock a few copies, but if you go into most news agents in Liverpool, they do not stock the sun. And even though Calvin McKenzie has given this crap, and I'll say crap, apology, sorry, nobody <laughs> believes them. Nobody believes them. It won't change the sale of the sun. Yep. Um, even though the the it, the new editor has printed all these new truths because on Thursday um, then the new headline was the real truth on the sun. Yeah. Well, what would happen if I would um, if I would go into a newspaper and try to buy the sun? Would you, you think they would go like... They might look at, depending on where you are, no I don't even think depending on who, where you are, I think you would get a look, you get a weird <laughs> look, um, and if you and you best put it in your bag as soon as before you leave the shop as well, really? because I see people see you buying the sun in this city. My friend in fact was telling me yesterday, because her dad used to be work in a prison, uh, used to work in Walton Prison, yep. that's the main prison here, and apparently when when any of the prisoners used to get the sun, it, the prison officers used to write. I don't want to say. I don't want to swear. Yeah, they go, used to go, write, go. Okay, they used to write "you twat" on yeah. the top, right? And that yeah. was for people. That was for the prisoners who were going to be getting the sun. Yeah. Because that's how much the feeling is about the sun in yeah. this city. Yeah. For twenty-three years. For twenty-three already. years. Yeah. Oh, great. Yes. So, um, but yes. Yeah, so it's a very, very delicate and emotional time for Liverpool this week yeah. but it's a brilliant time as well because you feel justice hasn't been achieved for the families because they've got to get things done they've got more of a fight now on their hands they've got to get the um, verdicts of accidental death overturned okay because it was unlawful killing yeah so they've got to get that overturned and that's another process mm. they've got to get you know there's one of the mothers who's been campaigning to get um, the time of her son's death changed from 315 because it wasn't 315 for a lot of the victims yeah so there's still fights you think going it's on. very important for them to 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 change that yes yeah yes it is you can't let people get away you're saying it was accidental death it wasn't an accidental death because it was the direction was given yeah and not only was it not an accident they allowed so many people to die because they could have helped them they didn't let the ambulance only one ambulance was allowed onto the pitch mm. while people were dying you know, so even yeah. the emergency services, some of the, them were complicit within this. So it went all across and people need to be accountable. And even politicians the other day when you were watching it were saying, you know, this is criminal. This is criminal. If, you're, if you've been accused of a criminal act, you should go through the court proceedings. You should be held as a criminal. Yeah. So people should be held to account for this. So it's probably going to happen now. Hopefully. Not.
Yeah. Hopefully it's going to happen. But what's good is that, you know, this is Liverpool. Liverpool is unique in a lot of ways and we fight. Yeah. We fight for things, yeah. And it was great. It was good. Um, I do get the feeling that when David Cameron was given his apology the other day, you know, the Prime Minister, yeah. um, people on the whole in this city do feel he was genuine. Right, so he apologised. He yeah, apologised for, for the families, he apologised the fa- to the fans, he apologised to the people of Liverpool. You know, he did a wide apology and it was, I think, sincere. Yeah. Um, but there's still a lot, lot of long way to go for a lot of the families. Yeah. But you've got to, you know what, credit to each and every one of them because they fought for this and their lives have changed forever. Yeah. You know, this week on the radio, I've been listening to a lot of stories on Radio Mayside this morning and I've shed a lot of tears this week hearing about what some of the people have gone did, through. Did you have uh, personal uh, friends or...? No, I had friends of friends yeah. and everyone, and even she was only telling me this week about what she remembered about that day, yeah. about when the dad of someone was rushing. He was, she saw him coming out of his house and he was running. And she was like, I won't say the name, but she was like, what, where are you going to? I was like, I've got to go and see our, you know, his son, because he's at the match. So he had to find someone to drive yeah. him to there. So it's, yeah, yeah. everyone's been touched by it, either indirectly or directly, but it's affected everyone. Yeah. Um, and maybe people, I think in Liverpool, we're not really bothered if people outside Liverpool continue to <clears throat> I don't know but you know we fight anyway we always we are a village we are a community people in Liverpool will support people in Liverpool yeah you know we're all in it together we're all there for we are we are all in it together right. okay I'm just going to go on to a serious subject at the cool. moment Hillsborough yeah okay I'm sure you'll have an opinion on what's gone on this week yeah, I mean, it's it's good that it's where they've got to up to now. I mean, obviously, they need to go a lot further. And um, obviously, there should be prosecutions, you know. Do you think, what do you think of Cameron's statement and the way he put it out? Well, all the, all the statements that we, that they've put out now are just too late, aren't they? they, they you know, it should have, that statement should have been put out 23 years ago, you know. Now they're finally admitting it, basically. Um, and, and there's still there's still that odd policeman there who's denying it, yes. saying it. it was still Liverpool fans. But and Betterson, yeah. not yes, yeah. he is. Yeah. But uh, really, he should resign and be gone, shouldn't he, really? He definitely should. Well, I think there's still a long way to go on it, like, but they're, getting, they're going forward with it at least now. Yeah. Have you noticed, I mean, obviously everyone's been talking about it, do you feel that the vibe in Liverpool or towards Liverpool's changing a bit or will change as a result of this? I think it will change, yeah. yeah. It's, I mean, it's got to, hasn't it? I mean, um, but it just makes it, it just makes you think like how corrupt the police really are, doesn't it, really? I mean, at the end of the day, I'm not saying all, all police, but I mean, them, the cover-up there, was. It's it isn't just the police, is it? It's the media and... You've got the politicians sun, politicians, politicians sort, yeah. yeah, you've got them all, they're all involved. I mean, you've just mentioned the sun. Yeah. <laughs> right. Well, no one buys that paper. <laughs> no one buys it, and you know... No we, one will. No one, thank you, that's what I've been saying, you know, Kelvin McKenzie's apology, for want of a better word. That's too late, isn't it? Too late means nothing. No, it doesn't mean a thing. So it won't change nothing about the sales no, of the sun in this city, no, will it? No, I wouldn't have thought anyone, anyone, no one will buy that anyway, and... I'd rather have no paper than buy that. Yes, I you know agree. I mean? do you, do you, did you know anyone who was um, directly involved or affected? Um, well, my two sons were there at Hillsborough when it happened. Uh, they were lucky escape. Oh, I mean, they were wow. lucky ones. I mean, they were in the they were in the crowd. Um, one of my youngest son came on and he had like foot marks on his t-shirt. You know where he'd been knocked over and trampled on, but he he managed to scramble up. I mean, you know, he was very lucky. You know what I mean? Well, the two of them were, they were with their uncle, um, and, you know, it was a horrendous day, you know. So, as a parent, as their dad, you mm. must even now think they're for the grace of God. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, we were sitting there that afternoon watching the TV when it, when it come on, and like we we hadn't heard from we didn't know four or five o'clock, and we hadn't heard a phone call or nothing. So, and it was still saying that there was... There was people missing and there was people dead, but we didn't know at the, at the end of the day Gosh. until they rung. It was about half past six, seven o'clock when they rung and said they were okay. So, you know, you could have been. They could have been easily one of them. Ninety-six. 
very easily. Very you know, easy. it could have been 98. Yeah. yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it could have been. It could have been, yeah. which is a horrendous thought. Yeah. How are they? How are they now, even in themselves? Uh, they're okay. I mean, they still look back on it. They, they've never forgotten about it. Yeah. You know, which I don't suppose being there, you would. You'd never forget about it. Um, whether you were involved, even just just standing on the, on the byline there and just watching it, it's it's it's, it's shocking, wasn't it? You know, oh, shocking's just yeah. even seems an understated way, doesn't it? When we mm. use it. Yeah. But the thing is, I think it's coming out now that even previous to this, there was before Hillsborough, there was already problems. They already had problems there with overcrowding and people getting trampled and stuff. But obviously, they never heeded the warning, did they? Yeah. Because I, I think I was reading the Echo yesterday, it said um, something was said eight years beforehand. That's right, yeah. You yeah know. That's what I heard, yeah. So, we, we, do, do you normally go to the games as well? Would no, you I, normally... I wasn't. I'm not, I'm not bothered one way or the other, you know. But these were me, the, the two lads are both have, uh, Liverpool supporters, you see. So, um, they went with their uncle because they were only young then, you see. Yes. It was obviously 23 years ago, wasn't it? So, yes, yeah. Um, they, were, they were only teenagers then, sort of thing. But, um, Lucky escape, really, for Lucky them. escape, and at least, you know, we can start rebuilding, mm, yeah. rebuilding Liverpool and everything. So, so uh, yeah, so wh why, did, why did you come to, to Liverpool? Um, I, because my husband from Liverpool, Yeah. and seven years ago we moved, I, I would never th think I would live in Liverpool. Yeah, and, and so where, where were you living in, in Turkey? Uh, I'm from Istanbul. Istanbul, yeah. yeah I lived all my life until we yeah. moved here. Oh, wow. Uh, and, and so you worked before for the newspaper? Yeah, yeah I was a journalist. Um, yeah. I worked for um, Dogan Media Group, which is um, the biggest media group. I have lots of um, newspapers, magazines, TV stations. And... Um, I was, uh, first I started as an economic correspondent, then I was uh, reviewing art and uh, yeah. cultural events. Yeah, and now you're here at the Blue Coat. Yes. Yes, great. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and you've been living here? I still write as a free, do, uh, freelance work as a journalist, and also I am the editor. I, last year I, I co-edited a um, short story anthology which is uh, the book of Istanbul yes so I am editing another book at the moment and so is this all in the in the Turkish language no uh, in English in English, English yeah. yeah and the I'm uh, my role is finding stories and then to um, publish for English readers so yeah oh, okay so so and, and the stories are about Turkey, Turkey? yeah Turkey or uh, about it uh, could be anything, but yeah. from Turkish authors. Ah, yeah, okay, kind of okay. like you're promoting Turkish literature yeah. too. Oh, great, great. Yeah. Um, do you find it hard to live in Liverpool after Ist Istanbul? Um, uh, it's not hard, but I think it's the hardest part to live your past in another place. Yeah, that is the hardest one. Any. Because it's very easy to make friends, to adapt yourself in mm -hmm. another place. Yeah. Uh, but ki it's kind of like uh, living somebody else's life uh, when you move permanently somewhere. Because your place, your uh, family, your friends, uh, your best book or your best cafe is in somewhere else and you yeah. live somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you pass those, that thing, and then you can live anywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and the weather is different? Oh, it's very different. Yeah, it, it's very, very hard. Still, I, I find it's very hard to get used to this weather. Um, about um, 19 years ago, we attempted to live in uh, Liverpool. I came in a month. I went back. To Istanbul, I said it's no way. I thought my husband, no way, I will <laughs> live in Liverpool. Yeah. And um, then he said he can't live in Istanbul, so we need to find a way. Yeah. To uh, stay as a married couple, so we moved to Cyprus. Cyprus. And uh, in a in a year, I packed and went back to Istanbul. Yeah. <laughs> I said I can't live in Cyprus. 
so this is my second attempt, but oh. this time I am okay. I can yeah. live here. When I first moved here, I thought it's kind of I live in an open prison. That was very interesting because it was so small. Wherever you walk, you could meet, uh, come across somebody you 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 know. Yes. So kind of like a, it's a very small society. It's like. I found very claustrophobic, even though it, I was outside. Yeah. But now I get got used to this scale, so I don't feel that way. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm maybe half semi Liverpool. You know. Yeah, yeah. So, so in, in Istanbul, it was not like you could meet people. Uh... Oh no, it's so with 15 million people mm. lives in there. It's even you meet you, you say your friend, oh, let's uh, meet up that corner. You can't see because it's so crowded. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's maybe there, is, there are ten Liverpool in one street. Yeah. Do you do you like um, walking on the streets and that nobody knows you? Is Sometimes you want that feeling, isn't yeah. it? It's, yeah. Yes. Uh, and also uh, Liverpool in that it's um, uh, the main shopping centre is just one street. Yeah. So when you think, okay, you walked through and then came back and then the city finished. But on the other hand, uh, lots of advantages. If you want to say Liverpool Biennial, if you want to see the art places, hmm. uh, you can just walk around one, from one venue to other venue. Yeah. In Istanbul, that's why in Liverpool Biennial, it includes uh, many people, local uh, or nation people, because it's possible actually. You would engage easily in Istanbul. I work for Istanbul Biennial too, and it's um, most of people is not uh, are not aware of there is a Biennial going on in the city, and you can get lo get lost even though you got a catalog exhibition catalog. Yes, yes. You will see one place and the other place, and then next day you'll say, oh, it's too much, and you'll give up. Yeah, yeah. So some advantages living in the <laughs> small city. Yeah. So, but you, you're from Liverpool, yeah. always been? Yeah, born in Brutal. Brutal? Yeah. Yeah. And, and um, but, but you've been to Istanbul, Cyprus, I've heard already? Yeah, uh, been in lots of different countries. Yeah. When I was a student, I went to Mexico and then came back to Portsmouth to uh, finish your studies. And then what did you do in Mexico? What kind of studies? Um, Latin American studies. But, but I was there for the language, basically. Yeah. Part of my university course. Is it like Spanish then that you were all Portuguese? It's Spanish. Yeah. Spanish, yeah. And after that I started teaching English in Spain. Yeah. And then decided to go to something a different culture. You wanted to really to go out of England and, and that was the main... Completely, not, yeah. not Europe. I wanted a different uh, aspect, different culture, different language. Yeah. So I uh, chose Turkey. Yeah. Yeah. And that's where you met your wife? That's where I met my wife. In Istanbul? Yeah, on my way to Hong Kong, but I didn't make Hong Kong. <laughs> <laughs> how come? <laughs> <laughs> and then how long did you stay in Istanbul? 15 years. That's a long time. A long time. time, yeah. You miss it? Yes, quite a lot, because um, it's a strange thing that it only occurred to me after I came back to Liverpool, all the places I've lived in, uh, for example, Mexico City was this, there was a strange feeling I had, I couldn't quite place it. And then I realised that I, I'm born, born and raised in Liverpool, I went to Portsmouth to study, which is a port by the sea. Mm -hmm. um, and then I lived in Bilbao in the north of Spain, which is a port by the sea. Istanbul is also a big port by the sea. No, and the one that think, place that was different was Mexico City, which was in the middle of the country. And there was always something I, I could feel, something missing. Is it, is it, it was the sea. Yeah. Is it like, like the feeling that you, with the sea, that you can go away any, any time? No, it's or? just, I don't know what it is. It's, it's like, I'm, I was away from the sea. I wasn't even aware of it, but it was somewhere there, that, that, that connection yeah. to the sea. Very, very, very subtle, but still there. Yeah. Is so. it? Is, is it something? It's not visual. I mean, it's not like that. You want to no, go and sit on the beach and just watch. No, I, I don't like beaches much myself. <laughs> but um, you know, 
I haven't got the physique. <laughs> <laughs> but um, no, it was just something subconscious, yeah. probably, of being comfortable when I'm near the sea. Yeah. And so now, now you have to stay in Liverpool, is it? Uh, um, yeah, my wife won't let me leave. <laughs> But you, you can go together back to, to Istanbul, or is that not an option? Um, he really misses Istanbul, just one second. No, he course. became Turkish, I became Excuse now in, Excuse uh, English. This is, <laughs> this is my interview. <laughs> <laughs> so, is it true what she's saying, or you became a little bit Turkish? Um, yeah, I got so, so settled there, it was unbelievable, really. Um, from day one, I felt comfortable. I went around the back streets. I didn't speak a word of Turkish. Didn't feel threatened. I mean, mm -hmm. most cities have got parts of them where you would be a little bit wary, or, or be, even in daytime. Mm -hmm. um, there's a big section of Mexico City you wouldn't go into even with a armored car to help you out. Yeah. But um, with Istanbul, I just felt really comfortable. Mm -hmm. And Liverpool, how, how, how do you relate to Liverpool now? Um, I think Liverpool's much better than it used to be. Um, I'll give you an example. Do you know Boys from the Black stuff? Have you ever heard of that? Yeah. Um, it was a series shot in Liverpool in the middle 80s. Mm -hmm. And it was about the economic decline of the city. And, and I remember watching it on TV. And my wife was flicking through channels about a year or so ago. And part of that was on, you know, by chance he came across that program and it was where they were in the Albert Dock and I called her in from the kit, from the bedroom I said, come and look at this, come and look at this and it was the Albert Dock with all the windows broken yeah. derelict and it wasn't being used and this is the change that I've noticed because I lived away from Liverpool for maybe 20 years Yeah. if you stayed here and, and just lived in Liverpool you might see the changes slowly for me it was like, wow they're finally doing something with with Liverpool and with the, the, with the city centre as well. Yeah. So you, for you, it's kind of a positive kind of. A well, I think so. There are places to go now. Yeah. Um, things to see. They've ruined the waterfront, but for me, mm. I'm, a, I'm not great on modern art, you know. But it's got it's got its place. If that if those buildings were somewhat further up the waterfront, maybe. But yeah, I, mean, I think the city's uh, it's changed in some ways for the better. Yeah. In other ways, it's still the same. How involved do local people get in your projects? Uh, very. Like, we've just done a project in Lytham St Anne's and we mm. had an empty shop for two weeks and uh, we turned it into a sort of subversive visitor information centre. So the local people, we had a big map so people could add their own observations and confessions and thoughts and things like that. So uh, that was very participatory. People brought in their own objects, photos. It was just like a rather deranged tourist information office <laughs> at the end of it. So, so the tourist um, information don't need to feel threatened? No, or well, they or closed anything. down anyway. I think they've moved. So they said, oh, you're back again, aren't you? <laughs> so they're a bit confused at first because they thought, oh, it's not like a normal tourist information. Office. I mean, I should think these would be an asset to a tourist well, information exactly. information place. But we had people coming in just saying, oh, this is my hat when I was at school. And we had the f former mayors coming in saying, oh, this is a portrait of, you know, when it, what? <laughs> no, I was saying in, in Belgium, we had a tent in a field and we put a sign on it, tourist information. And people came in and said, where is this information? And we said, well, we are the foreign people. You have to give us the information. So we had lots of things that they could tell us about. So we created all the tourist information from the local people. Oh, that's good. That's like a reverse tourist. Yeah, exactly. A reverse one. Yeah. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think it's great. I love, I love, I've never seen anything like this before. Do you know what you're going in there to see? Um, yeah, I've come specifically to see John Acompris' film. By all accounts, that's really good. I haven't had a chance to view it yet. No. And, I, you know, today's the first day. Yeah. And someone's just passed us and asked us as well where yeah. this film I'm is. Yeah, I'm pretty excited by that. Yeah, yeah and so I'm good, yeah. good. Where have you come from? I've come from London. Okay. Have you come specifically for the biennial or...? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm 
Well, I work for Autograph APB and we've commissioned the John Acompra film. Okay. So we've come yeah. for that, but also the biennial in general anyway to partake. So obviously, as much as possible. So obviously you're very aware of biennial and everything. I've been before, yes. Okay, have you been to Liverpool before? Yes, yes. Okay, what do you think of it? What do you think of the biennial itself? Well, I like the biennial, I mean, in terms of the range of artists that it shows and it gives you an opportunity to get the to get to know the city a little bit um, I haven't both times I haven't been around for long enough but I've, you know I've got a taste so okay and you've mentioned John Acomfra Acomfra's work which you commissioned yes can you tell us a bit about that well it's the film that's based on um, Stuart Hall um, the cultural um, theorist and uh, it's kind of ex excavating his mind really and I guess um, the, the the theories that and um, observations that he's made since uh, being in this country and, and I guess um, and I guess uh, it's, it's also a historical kind of outlook really. Mm -hmm. And will you get a chance to see other works as part of the Oh yeah, 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 that's the whole point of being here. I mean, when I'm here until tomorrow, so, you know, I want to see as much as I can. Okay, so what, anything else that you've identified that you want to see? Um, I want to see Fritz Haig, who's, who's got one of his um, geodesic domes. Um, I'd quite like to see that project. Um, and I want to see City States as well. Okay. Very much so. How does the art work, because London, am I right that London also has a biennial representation as well? Um, it, not, well, yes, there is an artist run London Biennial, but that tends to happen on an ad hoc kind of basis. It's not strictly every two years, I don't think, but um, that's an artist run initiative. And then there's lots of other things that are happening. Usually October is the time where um, it's very busy with the Freeze Art Fair and, and stuff. And okay. Then, People, and then lots of other public institutions do a lot around that time as well. So, Do you think, as somebody from London, and I've, I've lived in London a bit, and I think it's good and it's refreshing to see people from London coming out of mm. London, mm. you know? So do you, I mean, because a lot of people think everything begins and ends in London. No, it so it must feel good for you as well, coming out and seeing different things all around the country or as far as you do travel well. yeah, as well. I mean, certainly, I mean, it's, it's definitely an opportunity to get about, yes. And, to, and you know, if you can stay for a while longer and actually see a bit more of the place other than what you've probably initially come yes. for, then it's great. And, yes, you just get an impression of the country that you're living in, really. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's, it's a good opportunity to do so. And then I think going back to the arts thing, you know, also to see kind of like fringe activities as well, to get to know the kind of artist scene and, and all that, aside from, you know, the stars that might be happening within the main show. But, you know, there's also up and coming as well and the emerging shows are like with new contemporaries and all that. So it's good to get as much as you can, you know, see and do and hear and feel a bit and yes whatever so just encompass the whole experience yeah so it's you know it's a proper kind of like immersive intense kind of like experience but if you've got a bit more time on your hands it's it's great to get about